So obviously the first thing we're gonna do is open up fruity slicer. If you've got a sample, whatever, just drag in any sample you got. I took one from Splice. I'm gonna take this piano here. As soon as I drop it in, you can see it automatically see all these like red lines, which are slice marks. So if I start playing on my computer keyboard, you can play these either using your keyboard on your computer or you can go into the piano roll and you'll see that it's dumped all of these slices and you can play around and chop them and that in there. We don't want those for now. You can turn off auto dump to piano roll up here, this little button here, click that off and so it won't automatically dump all those cuts and slices into the piano roll. But here we are, this is the basic layout. Up here, if you left click on any of these, you'll see that it comes up, the slice comes up in here, it tells you the number of the slice, what note it is, it tries to generate a note for you as well. And what you can do is also, if you click on any of these, you can reverse any one of these samples. So this one, I can click this little reverse button. So you're not reversing the entirety of the loop, you're just reversing that simple cut. And you can do that for multiple cuts. Over here, we've got a pitch shifter. So we can, if we move this down, it's gonna pitch it down. Keep an eye on the top left of FL Studio and the hint panel. It'll tell you by how many semitones you're going down. So if it's 600 cents, you're dropping down six semitones. It's dropped it down for us nicely. And then we've got another one here, which is a time stretcher. So if we move it up, it's gonna slow the sample down. We move it down, just gonna speed it up. Over here, we've got attack and decay or fade in and fade out. These are help, you've got a D-click option here which helps click and removal, but it doesn't always work very well. So you can adjust those. So on the attack, you can just slightly pull that up and then same on the decay. Like that one's got a click if I adjust that. Let's remove that click, but you might want that if you want to have that dirty sample sound, especially if you're doing like underground old school hip hop, or if you're doing lo-fi, you might want that in there. So with the chopping, how it's automatically chopped it up, this button here, which is your slice button, you can go down and you can see the different slicing options, auto slicing options. So you've got dull, you can go to the next one, go medium, obviously a lot more in there. And then we've got sharp auto slicing, it's just going to be crazy. And then you can do it by beat, so a third of a beat, half a beat, beat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to medium auto slicing and then down here, you've got the auto slicing settings so you can do low. As you can see, it hardly removed any. And then it, if we pull it up, it's gonna create a few more cuts. So I'll reset that and I'll use the higher. And I'll just pull back a few of those. And you can see now how it's, it is fine in the chops on every sound, which is quite clean. The first one's not very nice. So we'll leave it probably around like there. That might be nice. That's the overall setup for each slicer, so you can play around with these settings to get the chops exactly where you want them. Just have a little play with those. Slow it down a little bit. That's not too bad. Let's record this. Let's just quantize that. We won't quantize the leave duration. Let's accept that. Let's have a quick listen back to that. I find that one cuts off a little bit too short, so just extend that one. A nice, easy, simple, little chopped up loop that we've got, and we've got something different now, which is pretty cool. We could play around with this, so I've already done it down to six semitones. Maybe if I take it back up to minus three semitone. Got a little bit of clip in there, adjust the attack slightly. We could also adjust the stretch. Got a little bit more of a bounce to it. Not the best drum selection, but just playing around with it just to see how it fits with a beat. So that's not too bad, it fits with a beat, it sounds not too bad. We could also do some other things with this. What we could do is, is we could layer this up. So if we clone this one, and again, control, just select on that one, control C, control V, we paste that same pattern in. We can pitch this one up an octave. We're already minus three semitones, so in 12 semitones, we'd we'd have to go up to 900. So let's go up to 900. Now we could see if that sounds any good at all. 
without. And then of course we could send these to a new mixer channel, just add some effects on it, maybe a little bit of reverb. not amazing but it's all right so here's some examples that i want to show you that i did just before the video this is one of the samples i took which is really nice already and i chopped into this also chopped the same one You could do some cleaning up, of course, but just trying to show you the different things that you can do. You can take beats that you've already created or loops or melodies or take samples that you found downloaded or whatever. Use Fruity Slicer, but you don't have to just do it at once. You can do it multiple times and come up with something completely different. So you can like make multiple things out of just like one loop. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until the next time, peace.